Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to mount and install your downloaded torrent program. So this is sort of a follow-up video to my how torrents work and how to use uTorrent video that I created. And now that you've downloaded whatever it is that you've downloaded, what do you do with it? How do you get it going? Well, today I'll be showing you this program here, this uh, virtual disk drive program called Daemon Tools. I like it because it's free. Daemon Tools Lite, anyways, is free. Other virtual drive programs are such things as like uh, Nero has one and another one called Any DVD, and that's about it. That's all I know off the top of my head. Anyways, Daemon Tools Lite is basically a program that gets your computer to think that there's a DVD drive installed or a Blu-ray drive actually. So your computer doesn't know it. It thinks that it's you just installed a brand new drive, but really it's a virtual drive. It's not a real physical DVD drive that you put in there, but your computer doesn't know. It, it treats and acts like a DVD drive, right? And so the program that you've downloaded from the torrents is an ISO file. An ISO file is an image of the disk, a physical disk, right? It's an exact copy bit for bit. So the ISO file is essentially the entire CD or DVD, whatever it is that the thing comes on, like when you buy it from the store. The entire thing is a solid file, one file. Not a bunch of a folder with a bunch of files in there, but the ISO file is one single file and inside that ISO file is all the little files that you would find on a DVD. So the ISO file needs to be mounted into this virtual drive called Daemon Tools. And all the while, your computer doesn't know the difference uh, what you're putting into this program or what this program is. It just thinks that it's an actual drive. When you mount the ISO, Literally, it's like putting a disk into the drive and closing the drive. And that's what your computer thinks you're doing. But through the magic of technology, it's all this software here. Now, I've downloaded a torrent already. Uh, hopefully, you're successful in downloading your torrent, watching my other video, or watching some other videos on getting torrents. Anyways, one thing I want to mention is that this particular title that I'm using, I already own the copy to, so I legally own this version of Dirt 3 game, and I actually own two copies of it for both my computers. Anyways, so I got this, I have this game, and that's why I'm downloading it, or that's why I downloaded it and use in this video. Anyways, so moving on, I went ahead and downloaded two different kind of versions because you'll tend to find this a lot when you're downloading uh, the torrents. Some people will package the torrent, the program, as an ISO file. As you can see here, this ISO, one complete file. And then other people tend to break it up. And you might get a folder with a bunch of these files right here. These are RAR files. Essentially what they did was that they took that Let's see how big is this. They took that four and a quarter gig file and they broke it up into a bunch of pieces, right? And this is, I'm not gonna get too much into it, but this is because it probably came from another method other than torrents for downloading. And when they break it up, it's because uh, if you try to download that one single file and something happened, you're gonna lose the whole thing. So you could be like halfway through it and then you'll lose the whole thing. So breaking it up and downloading each piece one by one is more safer, reliable. That's another method I'm not gonna get into right now. But anyways, that's the reason why you see all these R files, R0 all the way to R84. It's basically broken up. And if you see here, it's about 97 megabytes per chunk, right, per file. Anyways, when you have this program, or when you have this, th 
thing here downloaded and some of your programs will look like this basically you're gonna look for one here this one that has an icon and that's your starting and I like to use 7-zip that's my favorite zipping program there's also WinRAR if you're into that sort of thing you can use that too but essentially what you do is you just basically double click on it and it opens up here right and there's your ISO file and then basically you're gonna click and drag at, out to somewhere so I'll just click and drag this into the folder now in my experiences what I try to do is not touch this when it's doing its thing to not do anything on the computer don't close any windows don't open any windows don't even click out of this window and just leave it there because for some reason it'll freak out and there will be a hiccup and then it's not gonna download properly so I'm just gonna let this go alright so after it's done unpacking and the RAR files and sort of piecing everything together compiling all those pieces together now it's copying it from your computer a temp file to the actual folder here that you said to unpack it to because I clicked and drag and dropped it onto this folder here this is gonna double the size of the actual program because you now have the R RAR files here which took up about like four gigs I guess and then the actual ISO file which apparently is eight gigs and it's kind of ridiculous how large that is I don't know why this particular ISO is so large alright so it's finished and I'm gonna go ahead and erase all of these other RAR files now you can keep it around if you want but I'm just erasing it to just kinda clean things up so that we could see some things here so I'm just gonna select all these RAR files except these two little files here and then I'm gonna press delete oh I have to close 7-zip right so here we have our ISO here we have some checksum file that's like to make sure that the thing we downloaded is valid and and a good copy version there's no errors nothing the files not corrupt basically don't worry about that now this file right here right this is sort of an identification file that the people who created this torrent or uploaded this torrent or did some things to this torrent this is sort of their calling card their business card now when you try to double click on it it is a file and it's a file of information when you try to double click on it it says system information is any, unable to open this NFO file dot NFO file might be corrupt or incompatible <clears throat> when you open up you get this that's wrong that's kind of a way to get a push away all the noobs basically um, who don't know how to use this file or open this file and so I'm um, for all of the noobs out there that don't know any of this stuff this is kind of the little trick <clears throat> basically you gotta right click on it and you gotta open with notepad right so let's say that notepad wasn't there what you can do is hit browse and then go to Windows Microsoft Windows and then type in notepad right so we're gonna open this NFO file with notepad and here we have sort of some information uh, about the game and a lot of times you're gonna find instructions in here on how to circumvent certain security measures of the game right um, I don't condone this course of action unless you do actually own the game but just letting you know that this is sort of the tricks of the trade. I'm not going to scroll all the way down because they've got the instructions there. And I'm just going to leave that at that. Right? Uh, I'm not going to show you that stuff. But essentially, this is where you would find out 
about that sort of thing. Um, if you like the game so much, buy it. Or buy a video card and it'll come free with your video card. All right, so that is the NFO file. Now on to installing Daemon Tools Lite. Right, so I'm here. I'm at the Daemon Tools Lite. Click on download the free version. And then this is very like so misleading. But right here, this little link, that's where you actually download the program. They got all these other buttons here that makes you think it's to download everything, which is weird. But once it finishes downloading, click on run, and we're going to go ahead and install it. Now there's two things that uh, you can choose to install. You can install the basic stuff and without a restart, and then there's this other kind of extra thing that you can download and or install but it requires a reboot so I'll click on next agree free license it's gonna check to see some things and then <clears throat> here's where it wants to install extra things so I don't want a Windows gadget file associations uh, sure basically it's just gonna say hey your ISO files disk images files we're gonna go ahead and uh, allow you to mount it when you double click on it desktop shortcuts start menu shortcuts yeah that's all fine see here's this SPTD 1.81 and SCSI pass through direct layers needed for advanced emulation features I'm not gonna get into that so I don't want to reboot this for the purpose of this video then it wants to <clears throat> try to install uh, AVG security toolbar I typically say no unless you really want that toolbar and then uh, don't allow mount space whatever this is and then install and we'll go ahead and let this install alright so you'll just notice here that the computer thinks that we just installed a DVD drive or CD-ROM device right it came up and installed some drivers this is the virtual thing that I was talking about. So we'll let that happen and we're going to go ahead and run Daemon Tools Lite. But let's check out my computer and you'll see here I actually got an extra drive, right? An extra physical drive. My computer doesn't know any difference. It thinks that I actually just really installed a physical drive. All right, so this is our console here and I'm going to go ahead and basically in this area you can just drag and drop a ISO file and then right here our drive our fake virtual drive which is drive F apparently when you click and drag this onto the drive it's like you're physically putting in the disk into your drive right so when I let go drag and drop bam there we go it thinks that I just inserted this disk then you can run the setup then you can resort to that extra bit of information in the NFO file that I showed you but then again do that at your own risk and uh, I suggest that you actually do purchase the game especially when you want to play online because you're not going to be able to get online and play online without uh, without an actual license or a key. Now, for the methods of circumventing the security options, there are many different ways of doing such things. Each, a lot of times, each program or whoever uploaded the program, they did their own methods, they did their own thing, and they'll have instruction on there. A lot of it's pretty simple sometimes, but a lot of it is also very complicated and I'm not going to get into it too much, one, because I'll get in trouble, you'll get in trouble, we all get in trouble. So, and also, it just, there's so many different ways. If I showed you for this game, it'd really only be for this game, and it's not really worth it. All right, so one last thing I want to show you. 
after you've uh, have this running here what you can do is right click on it and unmount and basically that's just like you just ejected the disk out of the drive and then right up here your image catalog basically it's just remembering where this image is right here so there's a path there so it's not really living on in that program you could just hit delete and then forget about the history and stuff like that if you want to keep things clean or whatever but you can also just since you associated ISO files with Daemon Tools Lite here you see the little icon you can double click on it and it basically is mounting it it's in, it's putting the disk inside of the virtual drive and there it comes up again so that's another thing that you can do and you have to unmount another thing also you can add more than one drive so you can click on this button here and it's installing another drive so you can have like basically two virtual drives I don't know what application you would be using that for necessarily but you can add as many as you want well maybe not as many as you want but probably like as many letters as there are you can assign drives to anyways you can have that you can get rid of the drive and it's like you've just unplugged a physical drive and so that's pretty much it thanks for watching I hope this helped you and please comment subscribe rate thumbs up thumbs down share the video that would be much appreciative Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later.